Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for that amazing introduction. Uh, I dreamt big, and this is the story of how the dreams became a reality. So, uh, you know, I'll, for every story, there is always a backstory. There's always the past. So I wanted to go back to the past a bit. And to go back to the past, I need to connect to the audience. I see a lot of high school students. I see a lot of university students out there. So I will start with my journey when I was in high school, and then I you know, started moving to university. All right, let's go back to my school life. When I was in school, this was my situation. Not very happy. And I think a lot of us can kind of relate to that. There's a lot of work pressure, there's a lot of study pressure, and you know, um, we don't wake up in the morning excited to go to school, and that's a problem. You know, your parents have to push you to go to school, and that was not just my situation, my friends and other, uh, other schoolmates, same story. Parents had to push us to go to school. The only days we'd be excited to go to school was when we had sports, when we had drama, right? When we, you know, had a, an exciting, you know, encounter with a friend or, or it's mainly the friends or other activities, but not necessarily the class, not necessarily academics. So I realized there must be something probably wrong with, you know, how education was being delivered. So, uh, you know, this is where I got excited. The early seeds of WNES, that's actually a term, you know, I came up later, later with. It's called World's Next Education System. That's a dream. That's an idea. That was planted in my head back when I was in high school. And my high school, though, was in Chittagong. I was in William Carey Academy. You might know the school in Chittagong. I was right here in Chittagong. And, um, you know, I started questioning it. I, I started realizing that education necessarily wasn't deep learning. Whenever I had questions, whenever we were curious about something, we would be stopped because it's not a part of the syllabus. It's not part of the exam. Our mind keeps wondering, right? You want to know something. You want to know, you want to get to the details of something. Why did that event in the history in past take place? But that's not part of the exam. Exams are sort of on the surface level. In fact, when the first, first the British Empire came to Bangladesh, came to the subcontinent actually, and introduced examination, Rabindranath Tagore was the first one to revolt. He said, this is gonna end the education system of the, of the subcontinent. So it seems like education was exam centric. And how much of everything we learn after the exam we remember, right? If you ask a fifth grader, sixth grade, con uh, fourth grade content, they'll forget everything. If you ask a sixth grader, you know, fifth grade content, they already have forgotten most of the things. So it was very exam centric. It was on the surface level. And there was no connection with real life. Whatever we were learning in school, are we applying it outside of the classroom? Are we going out and solving our social problems with that? Are we learning problem solving? So it seems everything is surrounded around exams and, and remembering facts and data, which we eventually forget. So I moved on to start and study and research what are educators around the world, what are researchers talking about. And I figured out that it was not just the subcontinent education system. In fact, the American education system was considered to be obsolete. In fact, um, you know, we started figuring that there were seven deadly sins of the education system. We started figuring that uh, there were a lot of things that were wrong and it was just not me or my friends. It was a lot of researchers around the world who were also researching on this and everybody was saying, we need a reinvention, we need change. So next up, I started researching more. I saw that this is not today's uh, school with a black and white filter. This is actually school like 100 years ago. And if you see, not much has changed. We still have desk, we still have a whiteboard, we still have a teacher teaching everyone, not much has changed. And I had a senior project. In 12th grade, my senior project was alternative education. And that's when the first seed of, you know, changing the education system was planted in my head. So, and my friends were kind of curious. They're like, well, that's a very strange uh, topic to pick. Are you really gonna go and change, you know, do anything about changing the whole education system? That seems like a big task in hand. So going back to, takes a lot of going back to the main slide, right? So 
Eventually from school life, I went to college and I found out that university was pretty much the same as high school. Not much changed. It wasn't, as, it wasn't more interesting. It was pretty much the same as school. So I reached my tipping point where I couldn't take it anymore. I figured that I wasn't learning as much and I need to really practically go out there and do something about it. And that's when I decided to take a very big bold step. I dropped out of uh, university. <laughs> Not recommended, don't try this at home. <laughs> right, so, um, and obviously you know what happens in Bangladesh if you're a university dropout, right? You're, there's not that many out there. So there was a lot of pressure. There's a lot of uh, struggle. And if you see, uh, just going back there. If you see, uh, the most struggle was not just me, it was my parents. My parents had to answer the questions to their relatives. You know, what is your son doing? Does he have a future? So much so that one day my mom came back home with a teary eye and she said that she was in the center of all the relatives and everyone said, for you, your son's never gonna do anything good in life because you allowed your son to follow his dream. That, he didn't say follow, he said follow his dream, but they said, you're allowing your son to do whatever he likes to do. And isn't that what our parents should allow us to do, right? So uh, from there on, you know, I started exploring. If you take a look at the dates, like, you know, 2013, that's when I was, you know, that's when I decided to drop out. Around 14, I started exploring. So, well, my first, when I first started exploring, of course, the biggest question uh, that everyone has is when you start your own startup, how much money do you need to start a startup? How do you finance it? What's the capital? And that's right there. I started with 2,000 taka in my pocket. So 2,000 taka was all that I had, saved from my tuition that I was doing, and I said, I'm gonna go and do something for the education system of Bangladesh. Well, next up, I started realizing something, that when everyone's questioning you, when, when, and I was also in Dhaka, right? I just moved from Chittagong to Dhaka. I didn't have any connections. I didn't have any finance, right? No capital no connection, no experience, what do you do? It's really difficult, it's a lot of struggle. And I realized that this is a lesson that I could give you all, all the young people. Whenever you're starting something new, it's important to understand the, but the, the life cycle of a butterfly. You can learn a lot from nature. You see, butterflies are beautiful. Butterflies are an amazing creature, but it takes a lot of hard work to get there, right? Initially. That's where they start, right? They start off with, you know, not so good looking, a caterpillar. And then they go inside a cocoon. What that means is you stop your connection with your friends, with your relatives, with the people you know, the people who will mock you, the people who will criticize you. It is usually the people who know you the most are the ones who criticize you the most, are the ones who disbelieves you the most. And amazingly, it is, it is some strangers, angelic strangers, people you never met, who come forward and appreciate and actually support. So it was important for me and my team to get inside a shell, to get inside a cocoon and develop our product, develop our model of education, what we are talking about, right? WNES. This model was about gamifying education. We all spend hours after hours playing video games, don't we? I mean, a lot of us do. If you don't play video games, you play board games or you play sports. How many of us are football, you know, football fanatics? We play a lot of soccer, football, cricket. There are lots of hands. Video games. Raise your hand, right? Lots of video gamers. How much time do you spend behind playing these games? And sometimes we lose track of time. We're playing and playing and playing. And if nobody comes and stops us, we'll just keep playing. There is something amazing about the way game designers design these games. And it's all psychology. It's addicting. It's intriguing. It's engaging. And we lose track of time while we do it. Most learning happens subliminally, unconsciously. You don't have to think about it. When you go watch your favorite film, favorite movie, you don't think about an exam that's gonna follow with it, right? You just learn everything, all the plot, all the character, all the detail, and you can tell everything so clearly to your friends and to anybody you wanna share with, how? because we learn things subliminally.
We learn things unconsciously. Yet education is so much conscious and so much hard work, so much about memorizing and remembering facts and data. You know, I started exploring locally. I started uh, going to slum areas in Dhaka. I started going to international school, ISD, AISD, all the big schools, all the underserved community schools, all the, you know, Bengali medium sort of uh, in the middle schools. And I figured a lot of different, I had a lot of interesting learning from there. Parent mindset. It was hard to break through the parent mindset. It was hard to break through the children's mindset. It was hard to break through school administration mindset. I went on to explore outside Dhaka, outside Bangladesh. How many of you have, heard, have seen the movie Three Idiots? A lot of you, right? That's the school, Sekmal. So I went to Ladakh to, to check out, that's, a, that's an actual school. There's a real school in Ladakh that actually brought the movie, the idea. Amir Khan was inspired by, uh, you know, one of the innovators over there and uh, the person who actually won an award. And we went on to, to understand how Sekmal worked, to going to Santiago, Chile, to going to Mexico City, to going to Dubai, to going to all different places of the country, of the world, to understand how education works. Started researching on education in the Scandinavian countries, in, uh, in Europe, how education works over there. So from there on, let's go back to the present. What's happening? What's happening at Tech Academy? What are some of the achievements? What are some of the results? So this is, uh, you know, so far we have taught more than 1,500 students around the country. Lots of kids in Dhaka. Lots of kids in Bandurban. Lots of kids in Chittagong as well. And we went beyond the country to Indonesia, Jakarta, and to even San Francisco. We have some students we taught online in San Francisco as well. From there, we started achieving things. When you're in your shell, when you're in your cocoon, it doesn't take too long for the world to take notice and for the world to come and start doing reports and you know, all sorts of media coverage. We didn't have to go to media. We didn't have to go to people. People came to us to actually spread the story. We won the Joy Bangla Youth Award. We were the world champions among 186 countries. Bangladesh was number one. Also, we have one of the youngest TEDx speakers, TEDx Dhaka, two of my students, nine years old, Abra Jawad, was a speaker in 2014. Uh, and until 2019, he was the youngest. There's, then there's an eight-year-old girl who spoke in, from one of the European countries. You know, we started contributing to creating curriculum, working with the government. We started receiving awards from the government. We started being featured in booklets and lots of different areas. And all of this came really, you know, not as a result. We were not looking for it. It just came to us because we were focused on the dream. You know, lots of parents, lots of parents had amazing testimonials, amazing feedback. Uh, and, and, and this was really, really heartening and this was positive and amazing for us. It kept us going. And, and like we said, you know, lots of media coverage, whether you're, you know, the big names, Business Standard, Daily Star, Dhaka Tribune, Prothomalo, we were all over the news. Uh, the television channel, Channel I, all, you know, all the big channels that are out there, even your national channel, CCTV, Central Chinese TV, which is the national television of China, actually came to Bandurban to cover the story of the school. So we got all the media coverage, international coverage, like I mentioned. But that's not the main thing. The kind of result that the kids were coming up with, they were building products for clients. They were building products for the market. They were working with games that were bought by companies like Ifad Multi Products. They were building uh, products that real life, you know, this, there was a connection between classwork and real life. 
and we even started teaching entrepreneurship. Bhaitamin is an app that the children at Tech Academy built, the children in Tech Academy built, that was uh, actually is right now in Play Store. It helps women when they, whenever they're in danger. Now, going back, this is my last piece. How does future look for us? The future is this dream school that we have, a full school, not just an after school, not just collaborating with school, but our own school, a big school, where children will come in the morning excited and they'll stay there you know, as long as they want. They do whatever they want. They build their dream projects. They learn robotics, coding, but they learn anything that they want. And they learn with passion, they learn with dream. And we want to be in every district of the country and eventually spread outside the country, have 5,000 kids. So, you know, I dreamt big in 2013 when I dropped out of college and I still am dreaming big. So I don't know what's going to happen 10 years from now as we celebrate 10 years of Tech Academy. So this is amazing. Uh, in a few days, it will actually be 10 years uh, ever since we started. So thank you very much. And, um, you know, hope you enjoyed the speech.